Hello, beautiful boss babes. Are you ready to chase life with Kelly? Well, I'm your host, Kelly Chase, and I'm so excited you're here. We are going to talk about all things love, dating, relationships, money mindset. We're going to dive deep into self-love, worthiness. I am going to bring on some incredibly empowering guests. We're going to have fun, we're going to laugh, and perhaps we're even going to shed some tears together. I am here to empower you, inspire you, and motivate you to create the life you crave. I am so excited for today's episode. Let's dive in. Hi, babes. Welcome back to the show. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to a sweet little friend of mine. Uh, we actually had the opportunity of working together kind of um, in the past. And then we have just, you know, maintained a friendship and relationship um, after that. So she has an incredible journey around health. And I think it's going to, I don't think, I know it's going to resonate with a lot of us women listeners out there um, who have struggled in some way forming capacity with their health, whether it's, you know, simply your body image to deeper, uh, like hormonal challenges and emotional eating and things like that. So we are going to dive deep into those things today. So I want to welcome to the show, Miss Carly Nossbaum. I totally just probably butchered your last name. You actually said it right. You said it right. Oh my gosh. Oh, but yeah, she's, um, with Clar- Clarify Wellness with Carly. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, she talks, like I said, about a lot about emotional eating, a focus on emotional eating. So Carly, welcome. Welcome. Thank welcome. you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. You're so welcome. I'm, I'm really like, I just love, um, I mean, I love storytelling and I love learning other people's journeys. I know, like I said, you and I have worked together in the past a little bit and um, just knowing parts of your story, as I mentioned, can help so many, so many women. I know that you you know, just like myself, which is like really cool. Um, you know, you took your pain and have turned it into a power and you are now creating impact and helping other women to, with very similar, um, experiences that you went through. And I think that that's just a beautiful thing. So I'm proud of you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. It's definitely important. And you're one of the reasons I came out and shared my story. So you, you're a prime example of that. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I, I know sometimes it's funny when I, I find myself in my head. Cause I think we all do like as, as much of a like mindset guru as I am, I still, you know, I'm still human and I still go through the battles of the internal dialogue. And it's just, it's a lot sometimes when I'm like, okay, you know, like showing up all the time, you know, on social media and things like that. It's, I was even the other day, I was scrolling through like Facebook, uh, like my Facebook group that, it's not dead. It's there still, but I just don't post as regularly in there anymore. And, um, just cause I feel like I have so many other things that I have to be doing. And, um, anyways, but I like went back to like post from like 2017 and 2018. And I was like reading how I was writing. And this was like pre, you know, love is blind coming out. And like a lot of before maybe, um, my like deep or like even before we filmed love is blind, before we like did a lot of, before I did a lot of like transitioning, and I was like, wow, like my, my posts were really good. Like my captions, they were just like so like personable and not that I've gotten too far away from that because I think I do still do that. But I mean, they were like mini blogs, like every single time that I would write something, you know, and mm-hmm. I don't know why I got away from that. Not that I have to start doing super long mini blogs again, but <laughs> I know, I think, I think it's like a tough thing. It's like, you want to keep sharing, but it's also like, how many times can I share this? Is it going to reach the right person? And I think that's, and I'm sure we'll talk about this, but like, that's where like that imposter syndrome comes from and like feeling like, am I doing enough? But even like you said, like we're still healing. So it's, I think that's all part of the experience too, which it seems like we're both very open about um, on both of our social medias as well, which I think is helpful for people because it's not all rainbows and butterflies. (laughs) It's not. It's not. So let's talk about those non rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, first, I, I mean, again, I want to thank you for being on the show. And yeah. if, if you want to just tell people a little bit about yourself, um, a little bit of your history and yeah, so we can kind of create a little foundation to the show. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have quite the story. I'll give like the Sparks Notes version, but also like give enough detail to kind of explain how I got to where I am today. 
Um, so all through my life, I struggled just with like, like from as young as I can remember, um, and my parents can remember, I struggled with just insecurities, weight struggles, social anxiety, um, in honestly in middle school, but also I'm sure like elementary school, like even like, I know, like I would have a dance recital and I would like freak out going on stage. And I think it all kind of stemmed from the same place. Um, but obviously wasn't recognized because I was a kid and nervous about things as any kid would be. Um, it wasn't until high school where obviously I like grew more into myself and started noticing more. And I had experienced my first panic attack and it was actually trying on clothes. I was on vacation and I just had like a breakdown and it was definitely my first panic attack. And like, it's when I was like, okay, like this is more than just like it was having struggles with trying on clothes. Like this is a deeper thing um, because it was causing so much social anxiety. And then after that, I kept getting that fear and anxiety. And I had like great friends in high school, but like they were very different than me. Like I was not the partier. So I think that was where a lot of it stemmed from. So I was just always struggling with those insecurities, the anxiety. Um, I did get a therapist in high school and like did definitely help, but I never really did that inner work. Um, I kind of resorted to my senior year of high school. I had lost tons of weight. I like wasn't eating a lot. Um, so it was in a very unhealthy way. But again, wasn't acknowledging it. I was just like, oh, like I'm losing weight before college. Got to college. And of course, what happens in college? You gain it all back. I was confident the first year in college. I was like thriving, having fun, making new friends. Um, the social anxiety was there, but like not as uh, not as much because I think I was still in that like confident new stage meeting new people who like didn't know anything about me. Right. So Throughout college, I definitely struggled with that. Um, but I was gaining that weight back as like each year went on. But then I would like come home for the breaks and like love my mom to death. She's my best friend. But I grew up seeing her do diet after diet. So that's what I was trained to do. So I would come home for December break. I would go on some crazy like diet, eating bars, doing this. And then I would go back to school and gain those 10 pounds back. So it was just a constant cycle in college. And like, I think it just caused a lot of different types of anxieties that I didn't notice. Um, but I did grow in college, which was a good thing. My senior year of high school, or sorry, my senior year of college, I got into a relationship. It was about a year long. Didn't realize how terrible it was until I got out of it and kind of got to my breaking point. But um, it didn't, luckily I still have those friendships, but it definitely left a really big dent in relationships, um, between my family, between my friends and biggest between myself that I wasn't even noticing. Um, it was just very toxic, manipulative, um, relationship where like, I, I look back at it now and I'm like, how, like, how was I in that? Mm -hmm. Um, it was bad. And I completely lost myself. And it's interesting because now it's the best thing that happened to me, which you never think you would say, but you have to hit rock bottom to come up top. Um, so basically what happened, it was just a very like, tr after, right after I graduated college, it was just a very traumatic experience and led to a breakup with me, like getting to my breakup point. And it, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, I like had lost my dog the same week. It was just very, very, a very traumatic experience um, and situation that unfortunately my whole family had to experience with me. It wasn't just me um, because it all happened in my home. So it, there was a lot happening um, in that time. I was also transitioning to a new job in the city. So I was moving to New York city, never lived there before. I did like internships there, um, moved to the city, like got new roommates, like just starting a whole new life after this crazy thing happened. So it kind of like covered it up. Um, it kind of covered the pain up until I like got comfortable in the city working a new job. Um, I was in an agency doing marketing and it was just like one day it just hit me and I was like, okay, first of all, I'm burning out. I'm only like a month into my job. Um, I was like, I am not healed from this relationship. The relationship I had, I was experiencing like some PTSD nightmares, like just really bad um, backlash from it. 
that I wasn't fully like acknowledging. So I was like, one morning I woke up and I was just like, this is bad. Um, I was like, I've struggled with depression. I've struggled with anxiety, but I've never felt this way. Like it was at the point where I would like you, I always talk to my roommates about it now, but like I would lock my door when they would come home and they're my good friends. Like I wouldn't want to speak to anyone. And luckily I think I was strong enough to realize that I needed support. So I was during this time, I was still talking to a therapist, but I had actually invested in a life coach and it really helped me find those ways to like really tactic, like have tactics to work through it. Um, and really to learn my self-worth. So basically I spent the time just really working on myself. Luckily at the time, my roommate as well was kind of just like going through it. And we kind of just spent like a year not dating. We, we were just like, it was just like a girl's year. Um, I started journaling. I started working out. I started nourishing myself with the right foods um, and just really healing myself. I actually ended up leaving that job. And during that time as well, I, um, so I left the job and then I was like, I thought I was being healthy, but it actually turned out that I had like a little bit of like, like kind of like orthorexia, like just like being obsessed with everything I was eating. But then on the weekends, I would binge. So it was like a mix of disordered eating with like two things, which those two things do come together a lot. Um, So that was all happening. And then COVID hit. And I was like, okay, it's time to invest in a nutritionist as well. So I was just like, let's get the help we need. Because if anyone out there is wondering if you should get help, get it from as many people as you can, because it's life changing. And it's, it's something that's so, so important. Um, So I started working with the nutritionist. Luckily, it was during COVID. So like I, it was just me and myself. I was at my family's home. We were just hanging out. um, And it was just a really good time to like work on me and work on that. And that's also when I actually started. I was like, I think I want to help people with this. Um, So I was still in my healing journey. Um, I had taken a job at the Institute for Creative Nutrition, which is where I connected with you um, to run their ambassador program. But it also, I also became a health coach while I was there. And as I was becoming a health coach and healing myself, I also was just like, this is what I want to do. Like, this is where I want to be. And this is what I want to be helping with. And I think it got to the point where I was like, okay, like, what do I really want to focus on? And I wanted to focus on where I struggled too. So like with that relationship with yourself and the self struggles and the body image issues, um, I also became specialized in hormone health and emotional health, emotional eating psychology when I was at IIN. Um, Emotional eating is where I'm more focused on now with my clients. But yeah, so I built my business, Clarify Wellness with Carly, started taking clients for free. I was just like, you know what, I'm going to do it, Um, start helping people. And I remember the first session I had with a client, I like closed my computer after and I, I was, it was during COVID. So I was living at my parents' house. And I remember I went downstairs and I was just like, this is what I'm meant to be doing. Like there was no better feeling of like that fulfilling feeling of knowing that I was helping people. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's the main gist of the story. I'm still healing every day, um, but I have healed a lot. I really like found my self worth and like, I'm getting married to such a great guy now. And it's just Mm -hmm. like, there is hope out there and you're like when it comes to relationships too like you're not going to find that person unless you've been through hell and back I say because like every my mom used to always tell me through every heartbreak because like I just have other heartbreaks as well and she always said she's like I'm telling you it's leading you to the right person and it's just going to make you stronger and like now I get it obviously um but you have to love yourself first too so it's important but it's all a healing journey so is it is okay first of all wait are you engaged yeah did I know that I think so but I'm not sure because the last time we spoke I think was like before I moved to Florida and then I got engaged when I moved to Florida so maybe not I don't think so oh my god congratulations thank you (laughs) thank you I know lots of changes oh my god yeah I don't think I saw that oh my gosh yes Yes. (laughs) I'm like, hold on. <laughs> like, hold on. She said getting married. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, what? Like, I mean, some girls, they're like just in a relationship. And they're like, I'm definitely marrying that guy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm engaged. <laughs> getting married in October. <laughs> oh my God. That is so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, thank you. But, but I totally agree with so much of what you just said. I actually, I'm about to start my period. So like literally I got teary eyed when you were like, I know like that I was like meant to do this. <laughs> <laughs> like a one little thing I can start crying right now. Um, but no, I just, I love that. It, it really is so true. I mean, you know, my story a good bit is yeah. part of like finding my passion and stuff. And, you know, as I've said on my, you know, recent episodes, it's like, I feel like, you know, it was kind of having a bit of an identity crisis and like, there was a lot going on in the last couple of years and, you know, but I'm like, have grounded a lot. I'm recentering. And I, it's like that same thing. It's like, I know like how much impact I can make. And I know like there's, there's so, I mean, I already am creating a lot of impact, but I mean, even more, like, I just know that there are avenues that I haven't tapped into yet and, or that I want to get back into. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I said, on my last episode, I want to start, you know, holding coaching calls again and doing that because I, I have a lot of knowledge. And if we aren't sharing that knowledge, it's, what's the point? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I think it's hard sometimes. And this has happened to me because like I said, I'm still healing. And this is where I relate to you so much because again, because you share that stuff and it's helpful. Um, Because like one, I always share that with my clients. I'm like, guys, like I still have days where I look in the mirror and can't look at myself. Like, trust me, I have those days. Um, But that's all part of the process. And I think sometimes with our industry, you feel like you have to be this perfectly healed person. And like you like, right. Like example, you're a mindset coach, right? So you're like, Oh, I have to have the perfect mindset. Like that's the thing. Like it's the same thing with me. I'm like, I help people with overeating, but I still overeat sometimes, but that's part of it. Um, like nothing's perfect. And I think that's so important for everyone out there to know too, like all of those people on social media that you see that act like they're completely healed, they're not, and they're just like not showing it. And like, yes, it's possible to heal, but you're always, life isn't perfect and life isn't linear. And I think that's something that's very, very important to acknowledge. Um, So yeah, but yeah, you just started a new job, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. At the end of December. So, and I'm, I really am enjoying it. Um, I mean, like really meeting new people pretty much every single day, unless mm-hmm. I'm like staying in or going to a coffee shop. Well, I guess if I was at a coffee shop, I'm probably meeting new people too, but yeah. just staying in and just doing more like administrative work, like emails and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, outside of that though. Yeah. I'm meeting new people and it's, it's just so nice. Like everyone's just been so cool and that's awesome. I just, you know, again, obviously I have a podcast, but like, I love learning people's stories. So that's yeah. one of my like conversation pieces while I'm meeting these attorneys is, Oh, like, how did you get into law? You know, okay. and like, what brought you here? So that's been interesting to learn, learn about. Yeah. You also like never know what's going to come out of an opportunity. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing too. So yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, um, I have a question. So as far as like with your opinion with like disordered, I heard you say disordered eating, right? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like there is a difference between an eating disorder and disordered eating? Yes. So I actually learned this from IIN. Shout out to IIN. Um, I did. So I never, I was like, I'm like, I, I just don't have the healthiest relationship with food. That's kind of like where I thought I was at. Um yeah. So like, and like this, like, I haven't fully like watched the module in a while, but, um, basically what it is, is the difference between disordered eating and, uh, eating disorder is like eating disorder is like bulimia, anorexia, like more of like those deeper eating disorders, um, which is where like, I personally don't support people with, because that's more like a, you need someone that specializes in that, um, like an RD or like a therapist that specializes in eating disorders disorder eating is a little different. It's more of that emotional eating, that orthorexia, um, and that like relationship with food, um, like, and binging can go two ways. Um, because like overeating and not knowing your hunger cues is more of a disorder eating. And then the eating disorders is if you're like binging and purging after that more in-depth eating disorder. So that's why I say disordered eating. Um, because I definitely had that. I was like, tracking calories and eating like 800 calories during the week and then like ordering in like 10 times like through the weekend and just like stuffing my face and I'm like I didn't 
I was losing weight at the time. So I didn't fully acknowledge that that was unhealthy until actually I started working with a nutritionist and she was like, you're not eating enough during the week. And I was like, but I'm losing weight. And she's like, no, you don't understand. And I actually had like, during that time, I had lost my period. My hair was like thinning out completely. It was also when I was extremely depressed. So like that was impacting it. Um, So then I started like eating more and like really fixing that and healing your relationship with food. Because if you're like thinking like bad versus good food and all of this, it's just, it just brings you down a, um, a hole. So yeah, definitely, a definitely a difference. So, and that's why like people, if like someone is listening who needs support, um, it's important to know that like, if you do have anorexia or really bad binging or like not eating at all, um, go to more of a therapist than a health coach, because that's, you need someone that has had even more schooling than I have. Um, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I was asking that question too, because I, that's how I described my habits back in the day was disordered eating. And, and again, as you mentioned too, it's like, we're always healing. Like there are like, I still have disordered eating like at times, you know, but (laughs) But what makes us be able to be the expert, quote unquote, in that is you have the knowledge and you have the awareness and you can give people the tools in order to help them kind of get to a place where you are, where you're able to have that awareness and maintain and be able to correct yourself when you're doing that and and all of that as well. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But the disorder eating was, um, I feel like I was the same way. I mean, that was me. I was eating probably 800 calories. I mean, I feel like like I was not, um, there was a time that I was using like, what was it? Like my fitness pal yeah. that app, um, and I was logging my food and stuff, but I think that was a little bit afterwards mm-hmm. first. I was just like cutting things yeah. because, because I would have recognized and been like, okay, Kelly, you only ate 650 calories today. I would have been like, that's not a lot. You yeah. know, <laughs> I would have recognized that. So But yeah, I mean, I definitely, it was probably like 500 to 800 calories. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, how did now, like now with what I eat now, I'm like, how did I live like (laughs) I know, I know. Well, it's funny too. Like I go home and my parents, my mom's always like, you know, my my parents eat very healthy too, but my mom's like, but they do eat a little bit more relaxed than I do. Yeah. And you grew up, you grew up on like no meat, right? Yeah. 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 Vegetarian for a while. Um, But not my parents do eat meat now, but Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I mean, you know, they have a little bit more healthier options, but more processed food in their homes, you know, Mm -hmm. the better ingredients and that kind of thing. But I still just with my gut issues, like I haven't even some of the healthiest ingredients, processed foods, I can't even like really consume right now, but that's obviously the health stuff that I have going on. So that hopefully will get better and I will be able to consume a variety more of food. But, um, yeah, my mom was always is like, what, like, what do you eat every day? And I'm like, I mean, a lot of the same thing. And that's what I was telling the um, dietitian when I went to my doctor appointment the other day, and she, you know, cause that's, they do like a health consultation and yeah. you discover what you're eating for meals. And she was like, okay, well just make sure again, that you're like, you know, rotating your vegetables. So I don't have the same vegetables for lunch as you do dinner. And I'm like, well, I mean, I don't have a whole Kroger like grocery store in my house. Like, but I buy a variety of food. Mm-hmm. So I usually just put it like majority, I cut up different vegetables and I put them all in the thing, yeah. do the same thing for dinner. So I am eating a variety just at the same time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting because I just recently also, I actually was going to message you because I saw your post about how you just went to the doctor and I recently did that as well. When I moved here, I was like, just like struggling with like crazy, like rashes on my face, which I struggled with forever. And I was just like, Oh, I have eczema. Um, and I was like, got to the point where I was just like, okay, like this is weird. And I was also like still struggling with my weight. And obviously as a health coach, I do this, I help people, but what I was doing was not helping myself. So I was like, okay, it's time to get more help. Um, so I started working with more of a functional doctor and like figured out that my gut was like completely like imbalanced. And like, I had like yeast overgrowth and all this stuff, but it reminded me because like one thing she said was like, you need a variety of foods. It's still something I'm working on. Cause I could eat the same thing every single day. Like I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's hard. It's like, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like, it's also expensive. Like order, like what, like tons of different fruits and veggies, like they go bad. Yeah. Um, so it's tough, but a, a really good tip is honestly like frozen veggies and fruits is a good way to just have them. If, as long as the only ingredient in, is the veg just like the vegetable or the fruit, right. but, um, 
yeah, it's crazy how just everything's connected too. Oh yeah. What were some of the, like, okay. So when you started or when you were losing the weight, when you were losing weight, like years ago, um, what like were certain symptoms besides weight loss when you were eating only 800 calories? Like what were, were there other symptoms that you were experiencing or was yeah. it just weight loss? Yeah. So weight loss, obviously, um, cause I was not eating enough. Um, I, my anxiety was like off the roof too, because what I would do is I was actually intermittent fasting at the time. Cause I would, I wasn't doing it for health reasons. I was doing it to wait as long as I could not to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, all I would do is drink coffee. And like now as a hormone coach too, like drinking coffee on an empty stomach is the worst, worst thing you can do for your hormones, but also your anxiety. Um, so I was drinking like two or three cups of coffee without eating. Um, so my anxiety was off the roof, like shaking. Like I remember like I would go and like grab something and like, I vividly remember like my brother being like, why are you shaking so much? Um, cause my hands were like, just like crazy shaky. Um, And then, so that I completely lost my period for like months, um, which was scary. Like I, at the time I wasn't on any, like I wasn't on any birth control. So like, I knew it didn't have to do with that. Um, like I had gone to the doctor and we like had figured out that it was the under eating. And then the other thing was just my, my energy and like my temper. Like I was just so on edge all the time. Um, and I like hated working out my whole life. Now I'm, I love moving my body and working out, but I hated it. And I think I hated it because I had no energy. I had nothing to give. Um, so I would feel so weak working out. So that was definitely a huge thing too. But, um, the biggest thing was just like, I felt like, I just felt weak. Um, and the weight was just like pouring off and it it got to the point where I was like, I didn't look that healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I definitely understand that too. Um, I'll I'll find pictures of me from like 2014. Yeah. That's when I like lost, like I got down to 99 pounds. Like I'm not a big person regardless. I'm around 110. That's my like norm. Yeah. 10 pounds is five, two. I know. Like, yeah. Like I'm always like so gaunt looking like crazy. I think I'm like, Oh my God, my friends probably thought something was massive. I know. I know. (laughs) Um, it's also like so crazy too, because like, and I tell my clients this all the time because like at that time, like now I'll look back at pictures and I'm like, wait, like I looked like that. And like, it'll mess with me sometimes. I'm like, okay, like I don't look like that anymore. And then like, I remember like one obviously didn't have the energy that I have now, like wasn't nourishing myself properly, but also I wasn't even confident then. Like I look back and I'm like, I remember looking at that picture and saying I looked fat. And it's like, that's why like my biggest thing lately with my clients is like your smallest isn't going to be your happiest. And like, you need to just be happy with where you are now because it's like, you can try and lose as much weight as you can. And like, yes, I help clients lose weight. But what we find is that like within like a lot of my pro, my main program is six months. And within the six months, like if they don't hit that goal weight, they realize like at the end that they've completely healed their relationship with food and like their bodies and stuff like that. because no matter how much weight you, you lose body dysmorphia is so real. You're always going to be hard on yourself. You're always going to want to be smaller. So like my whole thing is like, instead of shooting for the smaller version of yourself, shoot for the healthier version of yourself. Um, mm. as, yeah. Cause I look at pictures and I'm like, wait, I thought I was fat then. Like, what was I thinking? Mm. Um, so it's interesting to think about. Yeah. I love what you just said though. That's so true. Instead of thinking of the smaller version of yourself, think of the healthier version of yourself. Yeah. So and it's so true. Yeah. And listen, I need to remind myself that all the time too, right? Like with a wedding coming up, there's a lot of pressure, like, and that's like with brides, I think it's like, oh, like you want to look your best on your wedding day. You want to do this, you want to do that. And it can mess with you sometimes. Um, so I'm like ingraining that in my head because it's important uh, for me to remember as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was going to ask you too, like, you know, the whole like shredding for the wedding, like thing. I just, it kind of, I I think maybe there is some like PTSD or something around my situation yes. because I'm like, I like, I hate when people say that I'm like, okay, your husband, he it, it got engaged to you, like, or your fiance, he got engaged to you because he loves you for who you are. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to drop 10 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever, like, but you don't have the knowledge to keep that weight off either. Like, 
what are you like? No, like that's not it. Like be happy with who you are right now because that person is loving you for all of you. Like, exactly. It just, yeah. it, just like, it breaks my heart when people I know. Say that or, or when they're when when people say like, oh my god, I'm just like gonna starve myself for a few days or like this so week before I go like on my you know thirtieth birthday or something. I'm like, please don't starve yourself. Like you're gonna f up your hormones. Like please don't do any anything erratic. <laughs> I know. Like you're just doing worse to yourself. And it's so funny because like my fiance and I, we always like make a joke because he's actually had his own experience with like weight and everything. And um, we always say we're like thick and thin. Like, I love you thick and thin. And we're like legit, like thick or thin, because it's just so important to like, remember that. Um, but that was, I was just going to ask you, like when you were, cause obviously when you were like prepping for like the show, like where did you have like crazy pressure? Cause I'm thinking like the pressure that brides feel on their wedding, like you were going to be on a show, like you were on a show. So how was that experience too? You know, I, this is something like I have been wanting to like talk about because I yeah. don't talk much about it. There were so many insecurities going into that show. Um, So I, I mean, granted, yes, I had started, I think I was first reached out to in like April or May. And then we started filming in October. So, you know, good five, six months, five or four months anyways. But they, um, I had probably started doing keto early, like maybe around that time, not because of the show, because I didn't even know. Like, I think I was just already starting to do it. Um, so with that being said, because I had this like last 10 to 12 pounds that I wanted to lose, I still was not happy. Like, yes, y'all, I had gone from like that 110 to 99 and over a a course of a year, I got to 138 or 139, I think. So literally 30 pounds. You and I have such similar stories, which I know we've been like, we've talked about this before, but like, they're so, we're so similar. (laughs) Yeah. And like the number doesn't matter, but, I, but for your reference, like 30 pounds for someone who's five, two is yes. just a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> five, two, three pounds can be, feel like yeah. a lot. For us. So it was just that. And anyway, so I had lost, you know, a handful of weight, like, you know, close to like 15, 15 to 20 pounds. I was down to like, like right around 120 and I could not shake it. I could not shake it. And I was like, Oh my God. Um, so anyways, I, I was like, well, I saw all of that was when keto was like being all the rage was in 2018. And I saw friends who were doing it and they were losing all this weight and everything. I and did I'm it like, in 2018 too. Like right before my graduation, I did it and I gained weight from it. Um, yeah, it was like, it was fu- like, I, I want to say I may have I was able to do, it was crazy. I had a lot of energy for sure. And I definitely yeah. was doing it in more of the like plant-based keto way. Like I was doing coconut oil and grit, not plant-based, like, but I wasn't doing like bacon and cheeseburgers. Like yeah, I, I was like mayo. Like I was like tons of butter. Oh, but <laughs> Now I'm like <laughs> nauseous thinking about it. Yeah. I, I, actually, I had like the keto <laughs> flu. Like I was like sick from it. It's so funny because my mom and I were just talking about keto because she just like tried it. And like, I'm like, just don't like. Yeah. Don't, don't tell me what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 She, she lasted a week. Like it does. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I lasted a handful of months, but I wasn't seeing necessarily a weight loss. I may have lost like one or two pounds, I think over that yeah. time. But I was also like, I was doing like two a day workouts, not yeah. because I was yeah. like, I wasn't obsessed necessarily. I just the energy. Energy. Wow. energy. It was crazy. Like I'd get up at like 5 a.m. do a 5 45 a.m. spin class and then do like a hit class, like literally right after it. So my adrenaline was still high. Yeah. I was like, yeah, let's do it. But I wasn't even like starving or anything. Like, yeah. I, you know, so it was crazy. It, it did help me. And I, I felt like I got like more tone in yes. that, but I wasn't losing weight. So I was still a little frustrated. I was a lot of frustrated. Um, so going into the show, um, I didn't really, I mean, again, cause I think that that was just something I was doing. It wasn't like, Oh, there's all this pressure now, now that I was selected that I have to like lose all this weight. Cause it was maybe a month, maybe, or three weeks prior to us filming that I was actually selected. It's crazy. So but you knew yeah. that you were possibly going to be on it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But again, I don't think that that was ever the motive of like why I was like doing two a days and like all that. I just was yeah. like, I just a bunch of energy and I like to do spin and I like to lift weights. So like, whatever. Um, but I think, you know, it was more of the fact like, oh, I'm going on the show. It was like last minute, like the week of me going away to film. I was like, I've been like, I don't love all of my clothes. Like I don't have cute, trendy clothes. And 
probably the things that are still in my closet that are cute and trendy are from five years ago or three years ago when I could actually fit in those clothes. Like yeah. I could really fit in them. You know, we hold things in our closet. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'll trim down and then I'll be able to fit in Oh my rip. God, my closet's Ikea. <laughs> like all, like my closets now are like totally, they're more me, like as I am now. Like I, yeah. I get rid of stuff like all the time. Um, oh, I have to, you have to teach me how to do that. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, the read the book, the joy, uh, the life-changing magic of tidying up. I'll have to read it. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, I want to say that was like one of my first personal development books. I didn't realize it was going to be a personal yeah. development book, but it really does. Um, but anyways, yeah. So, but anyways, with all of that being said, I didn't really have the like, clothes. So I like asked a friend if I could like come and like, t- she had like the cutest clothes. And I was like, can I come and, like, borrow some clothes? I'm going to do this TV show. And she's like, yeah, girl, like totally come, you know, go, come like reach through my closet. So I did. So a lot of the clothes that I wore on Love is Blind were actually all friends. Wow. Yeah. So she could, you know, she just orders them from like random websites and whatnot. Yeah. But anyway, so that was like one of my biggest insecurities. And even like, I don't know, like I had brought some like clubby style dresses to like wear on Love is Blind. And I remember like our, um, our reveal day, um, you know, me and Kenny, like, yeah, and everything like that dress was actually Jessica Batten's. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Cause I, I think I had brought one dress that was like a little bit more conservative formal whatever but all of the rest were like clubby kind of dresses like that was my nice. and they were like really for yeah 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 or like tight and I'm like okay Kelly like yeah you're muscular but also like I wasn't secure in my body image let's put it yeah. that way and although I think I wore one of those like tighter dresses I just didn't feel it just didn't feel good and so yeah. like Jessica was like Kelly you want like I, I brought like four or five like nicer dresses you want to borrow one I was like yes please (laughs) it was like a challenge the whole like time I was like filming just like feeling confident in myself and so yeah I didn't but but yeah I mean I think like I said there wasn't any like real I don't remember there being like oh shit I only have like three weeks I need to like yeah um, not eat and like or whatever you know so yeah yeah. it was the same on it but I it was funny because I continued to eat keto like the first handful of days while we were on set and they would like it would like because we had a, we actually had a kitchen, so okay. I was able to cook some things. So I would like oh, so that's up coconut oil and spinach and burnt ground beef, and I was yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, but then I was like, screw this, I'm hungry, and I want other things. <laughs> yeah, and there's probably like snacks, and you're like going from like pod to pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was like, okay, never mind. And I felt a lot like it was like a weight lifted off of me when I allowed myself to yeah not be so restrictive. So it was yeah. nice. Um, but anyways, um, yeah. What, um, hormones, how did those get affected? Cause obviously, like you said, you lost your period, but how, not necessarily how were they affected, but how long and, or are you still, um, battling with some hormonal imbalance? Because I know when you mess with your hormones, like my, I mean, I did too. I messed with my hormones. It's still a process for me. Yeah getting yeah. something underway. Like I get facial, like coarse chin hair. Mm-hmm. And I know that that's the hormonal stuff. Yeah. I testosterone apparently in my body. Mm-hmm. Um, high sex drive. That's great. <laughs> that's a good, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you like, have, do you have a high sex drive? And I was like, uh-huh, I do. <laughs> I wish I had a boyfriend. That, that would be great though. <laughs> coming. He, he's coming. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, but yeah. So was that, how is the hormonal? healing been for you yeah so it's interesting it, it's something and like I I don't I help some of my clients like who have PCOS but like weight loss and stuff but the hormone aspect of things I'm still learning myself um I didn't like I don't go that into hormones because I feel like I'm still learning it about myself um yes I lost my period completely so that was a huge thing the second I started eating more than a thousand calories I did get my period back and like eating the right, like fats and stuff like that, um, is really important. And people don't like realize that. And like, I think there's also so many like diets that it's like fats are bad and this and that, I mean, fats make you fat. Like, no, you need fats for your hormones. Like it's very, very important. Um, so balanced meals really helps, but in terms of the hormones, it's actually like an ongoing thing for me right now. Um, I, so I wasn't on birth control for a really long time. And then I did like right before COVID, I did get an IUD. This was before I especially like took classes on hormone health. Um, I got an IUD and I like didn't have, so I like had very, my past, I had really bad side effects to birth control pills. So I never, I went on them twice and like 
was like a crazy person. Like it, it affected, it affected me so bad. So I just wasn't on it. Um, and I was like, not the most sexually active person in college. Um, like I just like, didn't like sleep around or anything. So I didn't have anything to worry about. Um, cause I was more of just like a, like a boyfriend person. Um, and, but then I decided like once I, after my whole like self love journey and I started dating Josh, my fiance now I was like, okay, like it's time to get an IUD. Um, and I got it. I had a good experience, still have it. But when I was taking the courses on hormone health and learning what birth control does to your body, I was like, okay, like I want this out. Mm -hmm. Um, my plan is to get it out like after the wedding, just because like, I don't want, I'm like worried with what's going to happen to my body when I do take it out. I have like Kylene, it's one that doesn't, it doesn't produce tons of hormones, but it is producing some. Yeah. Um, so the, so where I'm going with this is that I do all I can to balance my hormones. But when I get my hormone, like I just got blood taken, my hormones, like you can't really gauge hormones when you're on birth control. Right. So like my doctor yeah. said, I can't, what? Is it because they're being manipulated? In yeah, sense. exactly. So like, you don't know, like, what is going on with your hormones when what's what's like, what is the IUD controlling? And what is your body controlling? Yeah. Um, and it's interesting, because recently, I gained a little weight back. And I like, that's the only thing that it could possibly be. Um, but who knows, but the plan is to get it out sooner than later. Um, it's definitely like a scary thing, but there's so many other ways to like track your cycle and take your temperature. And, but that being said, like, I, I still think my hormones are imbalanced because I have these little things that, that like with like energy and feeling fatigue and like right mm -hmm. before my period, I like randomly have been getting like really sick, like getting like a really bad cold before my period. I'm like, this isn't normal. Like as a hormone health coach, like it shouldn't be like that. Um, I did just recently start cycle syncing a little. So like adding in like certain like pumpkin seeds and this and that, and like different types of seeds. Um, but mainly cycle syncing with my, like my workouts. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really helped in turn, like my last period, I'm still regular with my period on IUD, which is, which is I'm happy about, but they say it's not a real period when you have birth control. Um, but it's regular, which is good because if I wasn't getting my period, I would be very like, just freaked out. Cause I'm like, what's happening to my body. Um, right. but I recently started cycle syncing my workouts and it's really helped with like PMS and like, I like you, it's funny. Cause you were like, I'm going to cry. I'm getting my period. I am like, first of all, like raging. Like I like, you don't want to be around me when I'm about to get my period. Like I'm either crying or yelling or just like not speaking. <laughs> um, but for the past like two months, I've been really like being aware of like low impact workouts during my period. And like during my follicular phase, I'll do more higher impact and like really trying to do that. Um, and my last period was like two weeks ago and I wasn't, I didn't PMS that much. I had like one day of cramps. It was like crazy. Um, it also like my, I struggle with acne, like my skin cleared up. It's very weird. So mm -hmm. think about working out, um, around your period. It's, it, it helps, but it's, it, it's like a little confusing for people. Um, so I always say like either get someone to support you or like, there's also like apps that like really help with like tracking it. Yeah. What is one of those apps? Do you use an app? Yeah, I've been using the app 28 wellness. It's free right now. Uh, there's some things that like you can pay for on it, but it's definitely, it's becoming more popular. So like download it now. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It like tells you like what foods to have during what like cycle of your period. It's like what, um, like do moderate exercises. It actually gives you like Pilates workouts uh, to do. It also like tells you like, it'll say like your mood is, and it's so accurate. It's the funniest thing. Like it's like, like after your period, it's like, you feel like a tiger, like your like sex drive is really high. And like, it's like during your period, it's like, you don't want to speak to anyone. Like you are, you're, you have cramps, you have PMS. It's just very, it's, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also cool because it's like, okay, I'm not crazy. Like I'm getting my period. This is why I feel this way. Because as females, it's really hard for us to like explain that. Yeah. Hormones are crazy. They take, they take over you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's so interesting. Yeah. What, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the psycho syncing, um, 
like you said, I, I am a little bit familiar with that. Like, obviously I haven't done my research in that. Um, but I do know, yes, there are like certain seeds to eat during certain phases of your mm-hmm. cycle. Is that correct? Yeah. So like, there's like different foods. Um, I like, don't like know tons of them off my head to be completely honest. Like I have like worksheets and stuff that I give to clients. Um, it's something that I'm like becoming more and more like in depth with, but like, it's like, um, like during your period, you want to have more like warming food. So like squashes, like sweet potatoes, which you're craving carbs, like you're craving chocolate because your body is lacking magnesium during your period. So like eat the dark chocolate. Um, like there's a reason for those cravings. Um, there's also like some research that you're burning more calories during your period, but there's some research that you're not. So like, that's still a known thing, but like, I know me and I'm usually like starving, like a yeah. week my period a week before I am too. I yeah. can eat so much food. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like a pit lit, like my stomach is just, yeah. I'm just bottomless always, pit. <laughs> what? You're like a bottomless pit. <laughs> Seriously. I'm like, Oh my God, I need like just so much food. And it, I, I don't crave like healthy food. Like I want like, bagels you want like the carbs so like my advice with that is like during your period like have like the sweet potato and the butternut squashes and stuff like that because it's gonna help um but yeah it's definitely interesting um but in terms of the seeds like yeah you can like seed cycle this is something i've been doing more cycling with my workouts versus seeds but the seeds is something i want to get into but what i have done is like i've introduced like pumpkin seeds into my diet like as a daily thing um which like, I think it's helped, but like, you never know what, like I've done so many different things to help it. Um, but yeah, like pumpkin seeds are really good. Brazil nuts. Like they say a Brazil nut a day is like so good for your thyroid function and your hormones. Um, it's because they're healthy fats. You need healthy fats. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. I've been, it, it's funny. Cause like, I, I mean, again, I've, I've experienced gut issues for a very long time. Like I was, I didn't eat in like 2014, 15, like I, I didn't eat nuts or seeds there were no nuts and seeds in my, yeah. like, because I was like, I can't have nuts. They make me bloated. They made me gassy, like things like that. Um, so, but almonds and pumpkin seeds were like two that I started to like experiment a little bit with. And I've been eating almonds and pumpkin seeds, not necessarily like by the handful, but I'll like put them on my oatmeal. And those are the two nuts and seeds, like things that I have been able to eat on a consistent everyday basis. Um, you know, it's like half a tablespoon or something like that. And yeah. just a few nuts. Um, but pumpkin seeds are so high in protein, healthy fat, as well as magnesium. They're so, yeah. so good. So yeah, yeah, I am a huge advocate of pumpkin seeds. Um, but, and they're so good. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think Brazil nuts have selenium in them. Yes. Which is really good for the thyroid. Yes. Um, really good. They're really, they're, they taste good too. Um, I think people get scared of seeds and nuts because of the calories in them. Like if you know your past with calories and I'm like, you can't be scared of them, like, and use them in like ways. Like, like I always will tell my clients, like, if you're going to have a snack and you're going to have nuts, don't just have that handful of nuts, like have it with like popcorn or something like because what's 10 nuts going to do for you? Nothing. So like, instead of like, so like being aware of that, but still introducing them and yeah, like pumpkin seeds are so good. And like, you can put them on oatmeal, you can put them on anything. Like you can have them like sweet or savory. Um, yeah. So it's, it's interesting, but it's just crazy how like certain foods can do that to you. Um, like foods can just like control and help so much, which is an amazing thing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, granted, you know, I'm doing, um, I've done this before, but an elimination diet for yes. my protocol and that's, the, you know, and then cutting away like more highly processed foods. Again, I don't eat that many processed yeah. foods, but even what I am, you know, trying to cut that a little bit more. Um, but that guys, like they don't put you on those protocols as like, like it, it, it's for you to become more aware of your body. Like mm-hmm. that's what it is. It's like, because you're eating so pure and so clean yeah. For the most part, your body is actually being able to recognize more intuitively of what you need versus, well, this is just like a treatment, you know, it's like, no, like, remember how you feel while you're doing this elimination diet, because I promise if you start to eat, you know, chips, Ahoy cookies again, you will probably recognize that you don't feel that great afterwards. And yeah. it's your body's like foreign object. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so true. And like, two things with that. Like the first thing is like with me, like I also recently did elimination and 
Um, the first things is you like dairy and gluten is a really big part of that. Um, and I actually found out that I had a gluten sensitivity and I still have it when I go out, but like mainly like try my best not to, um, or like I'll have like digestive enzymes when I have that to just help break it down when I go out to eat. But that was like a really big thing. And then dairy as well. Um, I like, you know, you hear mixed things and I love yogurt. I love dairy. I love cheese, but I noticed like every time I ate dairy, I would get like rashes on my face or I would actually like get really anxious and bloated and it was affecting like so much. So like, you know what, like, let me just try and go like dairy free. Like, unfortunately there's not like the best dairy free yogurts, but you make it work. Um, dairy free cheese is like coming, coming up, um, <laughs> but it's hard, but you want to do what's going to feel good. And like you said, like, I'm not cutting these things out to restrict myself or to like lose weight. I'm doing it because like, I don't want rashes on my face. Like I don't want to feel itchy and I don't want to feel bloated. And, um, yeah, it's really helped me. So like, I found those two things that help, but it can be as simple as like another thing that I have a lot of sensitivities, but another thing that I'm sensitive to actually is like almonds. And Mm -hmm. I eat almonds all the time. And so like you, the elimination diet, I think helps a lot because it makes you like realize like there could be a food that's making you not that you're eating that it's making you not focus as much. And that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a really interesting thing, but, and that's like with clients, I think it's hard because you want to find those right foods. And like you said, with the chips, Ahoy, like I'll have clients that, and I specialize in emotional eating. So a lot of my clients, they struggle with like, um, not necessarily restriction, but like overeating and like eating when they're bored or not knowing their hunger cues. And there'll be a time where like, they're having a bad day and they're like, Oh, like I really want shit. Let's say chips away, for example. And I'm like, okay, but you can have that, but that's going to actually make you more anxious and sad because that processed food, is going to go into you and it has nowhere to go except make you feel crappy. Um, so I always say like make healthy cookies, right? Like make, make things that are going to still make you feel good, but not restrict yourself because restricting yourself isn't, isn't the way to go. Um, yeah, there's always a healthier option out there with yeah. Any- well, t- I mean, in today's society, there are so many replacements out there. And oh, yeah. And if not, they uh, the ingredients are, are more accessible to us to make our own things. And yes, you guys could be like, I don't cook like that's, you know, or whatever. But that is a process of I want to say, like, being in the kitchen is a form of self care. And exactly. like, like, it really is like if when you can, like, involve yourself in the process of preparing your own food it's there it really is therapeutic so if you can yeah. look beyond that and 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 granted yeah maybe you're like no there's absolutely no way I'm gonna be in the kitchen okay well then I guess look into alternative options whether that's hiring your own chef <laughs> or or you know having really like natural like good ingredients organic food like meals deliveries you know that kind of thing Which they have and like there's so many now like frozen like foods there's so many upcoming companies that yeah are healthy like that but yeah um cooking is such a way of self-care and like I love like baking things too and like I think there's something about, and I guess I think this really happens to when you were once really unhealthy, like when I would just go into the pantry and like stuff my face with Chips Ahoy or Oreos or something. And I think there's something about caring for yourself and knowing that like, you're like, you're eating a bowl of like, let's say spaghetti, squash, turkey, meatballs and sauce, right? Like, let's just say random, like, and you're eating the bowl and you're like, I like cooked this for myself. Like I am doing this for me. Like I am nourishing myself in the right way. And like, that's an accomplishment. Um, so it is, it's definitely a form of self-care and people think they hate it, but you just need to find ways you like it. Like some people like using 20 different ingredients and making a whole spending an hour cooking. I personally love my 20 minute meals, but it's still just like a calming thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, and it really does. It only takes me like 20 minutes to make majority of all of my food. Yeah like so simple it's funny because like there will be times I'm just like feeling lazy and I'm like can I just like uber eat something and I'm like oh. okay it's gonna take them 20 minutes to make <laughs> and it's gonna be like another 30 for it to deliver by the time it gets here in an hour I could have like cooked and eaten my seriously food. it's like, crazy get it together um but something else I just wanted to say just because you know both both of us graduated and you know became certified through IIN the Institute for Integrative Nutrition um 
I have recognized, you know, again, I'm, I, I live by myself. I'm, you know, I'm single, all of that. And to anyone, you don't have to be single or living alone. Anybody you could be in a happy marriage even, but something else is off right in your life. Um, something to recognize, you know, and we all are guilty of this. My, me, myself, that's why I'm bringing it up. Like when you go into the pantry, you go into the refrigerator and you look at it and you're like looking for something and then you like close the doors and you're like, Oh, and then like five minutes later, you go look at the pantry again, or you look in the refrigerator and then like you close it again. And you're like yeah. five minutes later, and you're like, no, maybe I can have that. And I don't know. And then you go and you're like, no, it's more of like, I'm just bored, but, but it's because you're craving something. Yeah. You all are craving something. And for me, it's probably that companionship. Like I really do want that. And yes, that's also a part of me where probably I have to do a little bit more healing around like, okay, well, Kelly, why, why are you not okay with yourself right yeah. now? Like with spending time just with you. And it's not that I don't, I mean, well, 99% of my time it's spent by myself. <laughs> I, there's nothing like alone time. <laughs> I love my me time. Um, but, but, I, but I recognize that it was a couple of weeks ago and I like, literally it was like three times I went into my refrigerator and I was, and I had that conversation. I was like, Kelly, what are you looking for? Cause it obviously doesn't exist in here. Cause you would have grabbed it already and eaten it. Like, yes what are you looking for? So it's just something um, to bring awareness to our listeners that if that is something you do, I want you to audit like literally every area of your life, your career, business, finances, any relationship that you have, um, your home environment, creativity, anything like that. And really think like, be honest with yourself and be like, where, what do I not like? What is, where is there an imbalance happening? What, 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 what would I actually love to improve right now and start working on those areas of your life so that you can, you know, not go to the refrigerator four times and, you know, be looking for something that doesn't exist because. Oh uh, yeah. A hundred percent. And that's something I am like really taught me are the they, primary foods they call them because it's like the food off the plate. Like you don't realize that like how much it's, it's affecting you. And like, we hold on to stress, right? So like, that's a whole thing too. But yeah, the pantry thing is so true. And like, I'll do that sometimes too. And then I'm like, okay, I either need to go to the store right now, or I need to journal. Like, I need yeah. to journal. Um, but it is like, like you said, like, who's ever listening? Like, my biggest thing is figure out what those triggers are. Like I have had clients where they realize that they think they come to me and they're like, when I'm stressed, I emotionally eat. And I'm like, okay, that's not just how it works. Like there's way more to it. What we figured out was she doesn't get, she doesn't emotionally eat when her son does something bad or when like something like went wrong, getting ready or something. She gets stressed. She eats specifically when her boss treats her like crap. And like, mm-hmm. that was the thing. And now we're working through that with like, I'm working through that with her and you don't realize it, but like, there's a reason you're going to that pantry three times. Um, maybe you just need to go do something else. Like you said, like go color. Like I always tell people, I'm like, go do something you haven't done in a while. That's like gonna make you feel good. Um, because it, it's important. And, and I think we just lean on food because it's comfort. It, it, there's research that like, it does make you happy. It boosts serotonin, but it's just like, how long is it going to do that for? Exactly. exactly. And it's funny because like he came to my house. Um, there's not much comfort food guys. There's literally like carrots and kale and Brussels sprouts. So it's for me to open my refrigerator like five times, hoping that there's like some chocolate cake in there or some pudding or something. Like, it's just like, Kelly, it's not there. <laughs> it's so funny. It's my little, there. my little brother and my mom were here yesterday and um, like they live in New York. I'm in Florida, but they like, of course, the first thing you do when you go to someone's house, you like, when not like, like a family member, yeah. like, they yeah. like, look, they got off of a long flight and like, I like, they open the fridge and like my little brother, he's just like, like he's like there's a lot of egg whites like there's a lot of eggs I'm like welcome to our house but like (laughs) then I made sure to get him his stuff but it's true it's like I'm not like I don't have that stuff but it's important to sometimes have it in there um I mean obviously like I'm like siete chips like you have those like simple meals like those really good brands that still have those like junky food cravings that are going to feel good because if you go for the carrot is that going to help your craving for the chocolate cake no <laughs> <laughs> no it's not i wish <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm like is there i'll probably like discover like i'll 
throw the carrots in like a blender with like some raw cacao powder and be like, mm, I'll cover carrots. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes it turns out good. Sometimes <laughs> those random mixtures can turn out good. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, no, that's so good. But, but yeah, I, I was just, you know, foundationally, it's just going, stemming back to the emotional eating. Yes. A hundred percent. Um, and really figuring out what that trigger is. I think that's like the first thing you have to do. And my advice for people is whenever you're feeling that way, write it in your notes. Um, like I know, like I even do this with myself. If I like, if like I struggle with intrusive thoughts. So like, if I have an intrusive thought, I write it down and I'm like, okay, why did this happen today? So mm-hmm. like for my clients, I always say to them, like, if you are going and you're eating M&Ms every night, like, except for Wednesdays, what are you doing on Wednesdays that are making you not want to go for those M&Ms? It could be something simple. It could be speaking to your mom, right? Like it can be something so simple. It's crazy. Um, But everything's connected. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that the journaling aspect of that, because it just helps you bring awareness and awareness is the key to change. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So I want to pivot a little bit now um, and just ask a couple of questions about just your entrepreneurial journey in general. Um, Like, you know, as you said, you took your pains and your challenges and now are helping people. um, And what, what do you feel like has been the most difficult thing or most challenging thing as a business owner now? Yeah, I think, and this is something you and I, I think, really connect on. Um, I think I, like I've said with my story, I've always struggled with like not feeling good enough. And like a lot of that has to do with my past relationships and stuff like that. And like coming out of something so bad, like really made me like it, you can grow it as much as you can after like bad, toxic, bad relationship. Um, but you still, there's still a piece of you missing. Like that piece of you will always kind of be missing. And that piece is like that self-confidence and feeling like you're like good enough. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, sometimes I wonder it's two different things. It's comparing yourself, which I always tell my clients don't compare and we work on tactics and tips, but when you're on social media and you're seeing another health coach or another business owner do this or do that, or, raise their prices to this. And, oh, I just signed up 20 clients for this program. It can mess with you. And you're like, am I doing enough? Like, what am I doing wrong? Am I doing enough? And I think that can sometimes be the hardest thing. Um, I also like personally don't love social media. So for me to get on social media is sometimes hard. I do it because I want to show up for myself. I want to show up for my clients. Um, But I think that's definitely something that's really big is like the questioning yourself on like, what can I do more, which isn't a terrible thing because growing a business, you want to keep doing better and better. But like my dad, he, he's a chiropractor. He built his business from nothing. Like he built his business from literally standing outside gyms with a little skeleton spine and like handing out business cards. And now he's like a very big chiropractor in our area. And he gives me so much hope. And then my brother actually also, um, he went through hell and back with jobs. Um, and he has like a huge entertainment company. He puts on like the biggest, um, the biggest shows for like Super Bowl, And he does like parties and events and stuff like that. So like, I always like, I'll like, I've talked to them about it. And like, my dad always gives me the, the advice of like, he's like, what you put in is what you're going to get out too. And like, He also just always says like, it's going to come back to you, which is so like true. So like, I'm always just like willing to support and help. But I think the biggest thing is definitely like that self-worth and no matter how much you work on it, there's still days where I'm like, there's been days where like, I'll be totally honest. Like there's been days where I'm like, is this what I should be doing? If I'm like sometimes self-conscious about it, but then I get off with a client and I'm like, oh, like I'm thriving. Like this is like, I just helped them so much. Um, So my advice with that is like, don't compare to social media, like take that detox if you need to, because it's really hard not to. And like your business is your business. And I think we're all like, yes, we can all have similar businesses. Like I think a lot of the people that graduated from IIN, we have pretty similar things, but everyone's different. First of all, there's so many people in the world that need support too. And like, that's something that we need to remember. But I think the biggest struggle is definitely sometimes like, Am I like where I need to be? Like, is my business growing as fast as it should be? Um, 
and stuff like that. But everyone has their own timeline too. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sharing. Um, that, that is very true. I mean, the social media, it's interesting because like, you know, as I've discussed with you too, it's like just been such like a mental struggle for me. Um, you know, just the various opportunities that, um, you know, I feel like, oh, that I've maybe like lost out on or things like that too. And, and you're right. It it, is that imposter syndrome plus the comparisonitis of just, you know, the other coaches online that, yeah, like, I mean, I even like, it was funny because I saw a a guy friend of mine, his story today, and he was, must've been doing a speaking event at a whole like women's retreat or something. But, um, anyways, but this, like he tagged the girl doing the retreat and I like just went to like, look at her page and I was like, yeah, she's like awesome stuff. Like I loved her stuff and I was about to follow her and I was like, no, yeah, I don't need that. Like, I don't like, she's doing great. That's great. But like, I need to stay focused on my stuff. That was like one of my, one of my former mentors. She was, she told me one time, she was like, like, I don't follow any, I do not follow anyone that does close to anything of what I'm doing because I don't want to compare myself ever to them. Yeah. It was like, yeah. I'm not. it's so true. I just recently, and I'm like trying to think of who it was, but it, it was some celebrity. I, I can't, I can't remember. It was either, I think it was an actor and they said something, um, I can't remember who it was, but they said it was like an article or an interview something. And they said like, what's the biggest struggle? And this is like a huge, like it was like a big actor. I don't know why I'm blinking on who it was, but like they said, like not being good enough and they get casted for like big roles. It was this whole thing, but something they said was like unfollow everyone that makes you feel like you're not doing enough. Like you should only be following the people that like make you feel like you're doing good enough. The thing is like, sometimes those people can motivate you. Right. So that's, what's hard too. But if it's yeah. someone like specifically where like, like I personally, I don't love following the people that are like, there's a lot of people nowadays that like put like there, it's like a whole thing on like TikTok, like post-it notes of like how many clients they have. And I'm like, I like they put like the name of the client. Like it's a good idea, but I'm like, you need to be showing everyone. And a lot of this is it's like business coaches. It's like showing how much money you're bringing in, which is fine. But it's like every day, it's like five new post-it notes. And I'm like, it's like you, you also just don't want to be giving false information to these people that are going to be like joining your stuff either. Um, awesome. It's not going to happen overnight. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, overnight. Yeah. It's funny because another uh, like coach friend of mine, she, she did a podcast episode once and you know, it, it was kind of generally talked about within amongst a handful of us entrepreneurs one time. And they were like, yeah, it's like three, three years is like a sweet spot for us coaches. Yeah. Anyhow, like three years is when you essentially could hit that like six figure mark. Yeah. In business, right. But you've got a system that is just working and it's consistent. It's bringing in the cash and all of that. And, um, anyways, I was like, that's, you know, that's so interesting, but obviously you have to stay consistent to your practice and like what you're doing. Um, so, you know, for me, I know that my business has been very inconsistent. So, you know, it's taken me a lot longer than three years. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. And like, it matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I truly believe like timing is everything. And like, I always say to myself, like I've this year specifically, um, obviously with like, like, with work, with stuff. Cause I still, I also still have a part-time job that I do, um, because my business isn't fully consistent. It's pretty consistent. I'm so thankful, but like I had full-time jobs when I was building it and like taking clients at like 9 PM. So I started my first like year and a half really at like a tough timing aspect of it. Um, so it has taken me a little while, but that being said, like, it is okay to take a step back sometimes. And I think like, it's important. Like I felt myself getting really burnt out a few weeks ago where like, I was like, I'm very in tune with my mental health because it's so important to me. And like, I felt myself like I was like waking up. I was like feeling so anxious and I was like, definitely feeling a little depression. And I was like, okay, like what is causing this? Um, and I realized it was just that there, it was too much on my plate. So like, I kind of took everything and I was like, okay, like, I'm putting pressure on myself to post every day on social media. I don't need to be doing that. So I kind of stopped doing that. Um, and it's helped if you don't put the pressure on yourself, like, yes, some pressure is good, but I think it's really important to like, take that step back. And the same thing as when you go into the fridge, right? Like just take the step back and like evaluate, like what, what is the main stressor? Um, 
like I figured out it wasn't my clients. I want more clients. It wasn't my business. It was like the social media aspect and like feeling like you have to like be pretty in front of the camera. And like, I'm just like, and also like algorithms nowadays are just so crazy. And it's just, I'm like, sometimes like, is it even worth it? But there are benefits, but yeah, taking that step back, I think is really, really important to remind you about everything. Totally. I absolutely yeah. agree with you. Oh, well, this has been so great. I know I can talk to you for sorry, I'm like, I have so many questions. Um, but this has been awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story and also the things that you experienced, um, you know, the symptoms, like I said, and what you did to overcome that. I wanted to like just remind everyone you said something that I didn't do it earlier. You were like, yeah, once I started eating over that a thousand calories, my period came back. And I want to hone in on that. Ladies, you need to eat. <laughs> yes, you need to eat. You want to, yeah, especially like if you want to have babies one day, like yeah, you definitely yeah. want to eat and like you'll feel good. And like, it's funny because I was at the gym this morning and like I like had a good workout for the first time in a while. Like my period just ended, all this stuff. And I like said, I was like, well, like I actually felt kind of strong today. And like, we want to feel strong ladies. So like eat, like nourish your body with carbs, fats, proteins, fiber, like don't be scared of anything. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's important to nourish yourself for your body and mind. So exactly. Yeah. Just be scared of the, like, you know, cardboard boxes that have 50 different ingredients that include like, yes. n- like number 40 red, like stay away from those. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stay away from those because those mentally won't make you feel good. <laughs> we don't want those, but yeah, whole whole nutrient dense foods is where we want to eat. What we want to eat mostly. Yes, um, but yeah, I, Carly is again. It's been awesome. I want to sh- you know go ahead and share like where people can find you, and if you have any like promoting, if you want to pro- promote something, definitely do that too. Yeah, definitely. Um, you guys can find me on Clarify Wellness. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, Instagram is probably the best way to get in contact with me. Um, my website is attached to there. I offer free one-on-one consultations to kind of see if it would be the right fit. Um, my biggest thing happening right now is just my one-on-one coaching. I plan to hopefully do group coaching soon, but right now it's one-on-one, which very personable. Um, you get to talk to me almost every single day. Um, but we'll have like zooms like once a week, um, but texting throughout. And it's just a very like high touch personalized program specifically like for you. Um, so if you're interested, you can just go to clarify wellness and on Instagram and, um, I should be the only one on there and then just shoot me a DM. Um, but I'm always posting about just like tips and tricks and emotional eating and, little motivational things. Um, so yeah, just message me, follow me. And I'm here if you need anything too. It's, it's definitely a tough journey. So I'm here if you guys have any questions. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. If you loved this episode, please download, share, rate, and review. If you are ready to step into that next level version of you and grow your business and bank account, it's time to unleash your goddess magic and chase life with Kelly. You can start this epic expansion journey by diving into the goddess magic course bundle found at chaselifetogether.com. Please connect with me on Instagram at chase life with Kelly. Join the chase life with Kelly Facebook community and subscribe to my YouTube channel till next time. Create the life you crave, babe, and chase life with Kelly.